Nicholson here, and welcome to Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. I'm your host, and on this show, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we'll be going over all of the day's movie news, as well as going over what it means for the production in general, such as casting decisions, trailer announcements, director announcements, things like that. So, without any further ado, let's get started with today's Hot Topics. Today's first topic is going to be about the upcoming Terminator reboot, sequel, re cool, whatever you want to call it. Um, so Entertainment Weekly has unveiled a couple of new covers as well as a couple of new images in their upcoming issue about the new film. And all I got to say is I'm going to reserve my judgment for the film until I see the trailer. Because if I'm only going to base it off of these publicity shots, which were not taken on set, these were not part of the official shoot. This was a this was a photo shoot that was done after the fact, and you can tell by the lighting, by their stature, by the fact that they're all just standing on some kind of abandoned runway somewhere. Um, actually, they're just on a green screen. They just chose that random background for no reason. Plus, you have a suspiciously grinning um, T-800 in the background. Like The one thing, I even went back and looked at photos of all the other Terminators. And in those Terminators, yeah, they had teeth they had a little bit of a smile but it was very unpronounced it was subtle it was hidden and this is just very he's like mm, and it, it's it just looks so cheap and cheesy and I, I could just keep going on and on and on with words like that but i am going to reserve my judgment until i see the trailer because the director they have on board um, Alan Taylor, he last directed Thor The Dark World. Now, say what you will about that film. Um, I personally did like it. I found it to be, with the exception of the first one being a lot more funny, um, I thought it had a lot more humor to it. But the second one, I felt it it delved a little bit more into Thor's backstory, his relationship with Loki. Um, I mean, yeah, it had an underdeveloped villain, but most of the Marvel movies have an underdeveloped villain unless they're in an Avengers film. So... It had a lot going for it, and I really, really liked his visual style, especially his visual style from Game of Thrones. So I think that he's going to be able to deliver at least a fast-paced, action-oriented film. I think they're over-convoluting the movie, because here is a little... like this is, I'm paraphrasing here, but these are little plot points that were unveiled about the movie. If you don't want to know anything until the trailer is revealed, you guys can go ahead and skip ahead in the video. Um, but I am going to be talking about the Terminator plot points. So the first one was that the beginning of the movie will start off just like everybody expects. It's going to be set in, I believe, 2029. And uh, it's set during the war. John Connor and his group of re uh, his rebellion, essentially, or his resistance, I should say, um, have Skynet by the ropes. They're basically, it's this last ditch effort to destroy them, but they are they have the superior force right now. Skynet's on the rope. Skynet's about to be defeated. So just to solidify this, John Connor sends Kyle Reese back in time. And he sends him back to prevent the, the Terminator from going back and killing Sarah Connor. Well, once he goes back, things aren't the way that he expected them to be. And now I, they didn't really give too much more than this. So I'm still trying to wrap my head around how this is all going to fit into a cohesive storyline. And cohesive, I'm using lightly. So... Sarah Connor was orphaned by a Terminator at age nine. Um, so most likely what I took away from that was that a Terminator was sent back when she was a kid and killed her parents. But something happened and he's now taking care of her because she now, uh, she was raised by Arnold's T-800 who is now an older Terminator. And uh, she calls him Pops, which I mean, come on, that's just dumb. Again, until we see how it's used in context in the movie, at face value from what we're seeing right now, this is not looking good. The villain will reportedly be a machine-human hybrid, so similar to what we saw with um, Sam Worthington's character in Terminator Salvation. It's going to be something similar to that, but I think it's going to be more menacing. I think it's going to know that it is a Terminator, and that's going to be the biggest difference. But apparently, according to David Ellison, who is the uh, mega producer on the movie, David Ellison and his sister Megan are just knocking it out of the park with their production companies. I mean, um, Megan has Anna Pierna pictures... And I can't remember what David Ellison's is. Oh, uh, Skydance. Um, he's been producing a lot of big budget movies. Like he did the last Star Trek movie and, and lots of other movies like that. So, but he did say that, and I'm paraphrasing again. He said that visually, this will be the most impressive visual effect ever done. 
Um, it's something that is so difficult. It's challenging their brilliant visual effects artist. And we know that they have Industrial Light and Magic working on this film. These are the guys that did Star Wars, Transformers. Uh, I mean, like you could just keep going on and on and on. And for them to be really challenged on something, I mean, I'm pretty sure every movie has some kind of a challenge, whether it be how do we get this leg to move a little bit more realistic or something of that sort. But according to this, it will be the most visually impressive visual effect ever done. And I'll believe that when I see it, because a lot of studios have come out with that promise and have failed miserably. But going back to the photo shoot, because this is mainly just about these pictures, this just looks awkward. Like it just looks, I mean, they're over pronouncing their screams. I mean, you can look here, I'll, I'll bring up the photos. So you've got, um, you've got Amelia Clark paying, playing Sarah Connor and I don't know why anybody in their right mind would scream that much shooting a gun. Then you have Jason Clark. Jason Clark looks to be the most, how do I put this? Um, he looks to be embracing his character the most. He looks like he fits the most out of all of these pictures. The one that stands out the most is Jai Courtney. Um, but I'm a big fan of Jai Courtney and I hope that he actually is able to knock it out of the park in this movie. But um, then you see Matt Smith. And m most people would know Matt Smith from Doctor Who. He played Doctor Who for a while. And according to this, we don't know the character's name. He's apparently a new character to this movie. He is going to be an ally to John Connor. Um, most likely his, you know, third hand man or, or his left hand man, if you will. Because uh, he's got John Connor and then he's got Kyle Reese as his, basically his second in command. And then I believe that... Um, that Matt Smith's character is going to be like the third person in that row. But overall, what I'm seeing from this movie so far, I'm just, they're not winning me over. This, compared with this movie in Fantastic Four, we're not getting anything substantial out of them. And when we do, or if something leaks out, it's, again, it's taken out of context. So, I mean, look at how many people really freaked out over um, The Amazing Spider-Man's Spider-Man costume, the first one. Uh, how ma and many people were upset about it. They thought this looks so cheap and cheesy and looks garbage. And then we saw in the movie how it was utilized with the filters and the lighting systems and everything about how post-production affects an overall film shoot. We were able to see it in context and we were able to see it, how good it actually did look. So again, that's why I'm, I'm waiting to give my full opinion on the movie until I at least see the trailer to say whether or not I'm really still invested in this project or if I'm just giving up on it based on these pictures. I'll never give up on a film just based on pictures. But unless this movie was to come out and have, you know, Lindsay Lohan in every single shot, then at that point I would say, okay, I'm going to take a step back here because these people have no idea what they're doing. But um, as it stands right now, I mean, it's got, it's got a great writer on board. It's got a great director. It's got a nice seasoned, well, not seasoned, but it's got a nice up-and-coming cast. I mean, Amelia Clark's knocking it out of the park on Game of Thrones. Jai Courtney, to me, he stole the show on Spartacus, and he's been succeeding ever since then. Say what you will about Frank and, uh, I, Frankenstein. That movie is so bad, but it is so entertaining, and you could tell that he knew exactly what type of movie that was because he is such just a, a blank character in that movie. But then you see him in Jack Reacher. And Jack Reacher, he plays just a menacing character in that. But he's so subtle, he's so subdued, that uh, it really worked for me. So I really do think that he can play this role. It's just he hasn't really been given that, that way of being able to shine. I think Alan Taylor can bring that out of him. But uh, Terminator Genesis is going to open up on July 1st, 2015. Hopefully these pictures coming out and the, uh, the covers for Entertainment Weekly mean that at some point in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be getting our first look at this film in terms of a trailer. So if we do get a trailer in the next couple of weeks or whenever we do get it, I will definitely update you guys on here. This next movie here came right out of left field for me. I had no idea this movie was coming out, but you got Oscar Isaac, you have Domhnall Gleeson, who are two of the upcoming stars of the next Star Wars movie, um, in Alex Garland's directorial debut. And Alex Garland is the writer of such movies that just recently came out, such as Dread, which is criminally underrated. A lot more people need to go and see that movie because it is just so much fun. Um, he also wrote Sunshine, which to me is my favorite Danny Boyle film. I know a lot of people out there love, um, um, they love Train Spotting and a couple of his other films. I know a lot of people who actually, their favorite film is The Beach of his. But anyway, my favorite film of his is Sunshine, just because of what he was trying to accomplish with that movie. And I even really didn't like the uh, the third act. 
Um, I thought it fit within the storyline, and it it really turned the movie on its head. Uh, I really did like it. I know a lot of people out there didn't, and that's fine. But um, this is his directorial debut, and wow. I mean, this looks so... There's two trailers. I got both the links in the, in the description below. One is a domestic trailer, and one is an international trailer. I personally like the international trailer better. You get a better sense of the story and what's going on. But the domestic trailer adds a lot more to the mystery of what's going on and what exactly could be going on. So the basic premise of this movie is Domino Gleason works for this mega company. I'll think of it like a Google type company or an Apple company. Um, and the CEO of that company is played by Oscar Isaac and he's a recluse. He is somebody who nobody can talk to him. Nobody can see him. Um, he lives in this in this house in the middle of nowhere that ha you have to be taken there by helicopter because there's no roads that get there but it's basically like a lab it's his own workplace but he doesn't get any visitors and so Domhnall Gleeson's character wins this uh chance to go and meet him and and work with him directly and so you see him get there and um you find out that through his entire time that he's been there he's been working on this artificial intelligence uh, and basically like the most pure form of artificial intelligence and he's built a robotic body with synthetic skin and all that jazz but as you start to, as the trailer unfolds you start to see that there's more to this than just him creating artificial intelligence he's created a very human intelligence within this uh, robot and whether or not his motives are the ones that are at play if she is the one uh, the robot if she is the one who has all these different plans. The trailer really emphasizes the fact that Oscar Isaac is going to portray some kind of a villain throughout the film. But I wouldn't be surprised if, because of his his writing critique, that at the end of the film you find out that it is actually the robot. Um, I'm drawing a blank on her name. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if it was actually her who was the one who was the villain throughout the whole film. Because you really get to see the fact that, you know, it looks as though Oscar Isaac has brought him here for that specific reason to interact with this robot. Um, he's programmed the robot to flirt, to interact in a way that seems oddly human. And Domhnall Gleeson is really kind of afraid of this. He doesn't know what the exact motives were. It just looks like it's going to be a great mind game between these two guys dealing with this robot and the situation and what's actually going to unfold. This, to me, to me, just looks fascinating. I definitely recommend everybody to check it out in the comments section below or in the uh, description of the video below. And in the comments section, put down uh, your thoughts about the trailer, whether or not you liked it, whether or not you felt that it's kind of repetitive, we've seen this before or anything like that. Because to me personally, there were elements that did seem familiar, but they were being executed in a much better way, uh, at least to me from what I got from the trailer. But uh, I'm definitely uh, up on this film. I I'm really excited about this movie. Now, taking a step back, when dealing with a directorial debut the last one that i'm thinking of of an accomplished writer was wally fister's debut with transcendence now to me the trailers coming into that movie i was excited about it i thought okay good i mean yes johnny depp's head or johnny depp's mind goes into a computer but he's still not really playing a weird character that he's been playing a lot of people said well yeah but he goes into a computer so he still acts like johnny depp He's a little bit more removed emotionally, but that's Johnny Depp. Um, but that movie, I was really looking forward to. It had a stellar cast, um, and it was horrible. I mean, I f I'm the type of person, I don't fall asleep watching a movie, unless I'm actually just laying in my bed having a movie play while I'm going to sleep. But if I go to a movie theater, I never fall asleep. I've only fallen asleep twice. Actually, now three times in a movie. The first time was in the movie Nonstop. Or not, not nonstop, sorry, Unknown. Liam Neeson's movie, Unknown, because I was watching Taken meets The Bourne Identity. And they were literally taking scenes from each movie and just putting them together. And I felt like I had already seen this and I fell asleep. The next two times were both during Transcendence. Because I fell asleep about a half an hour in and woke up. Like, I, it was one of those five-minute things where you just wake up. And, and I was just dozing off the whole movie. And then I fell asleep again. Woke up right before the third act and then watched the movie finish itself. But, um, and even when I woke up, I found that I hadn't missed really anything because nothing happened during that movie. Nothing interesting really happened. There were a lot of cool ideas that they came out with and they never executed on them. And that's my one hope that Alex Garland is able to avoid with this film is that he brings about great um, options and ideas, but is able to execute them or at least able to plant seeds that they are going to be executed later on. So personally, I think that this movie could be great. 
it looks great, but that's the whole point of a trailer. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Definitely check out both the trailers. The links are in the description of this video. Um, Ex Machina is definitely coming out, or at least is supposedly going to be coming out on April 10th, 2015. If we do get more information about this movie or anything else about it, I will definitely update you guys on here. And now we've made it to our user submitted question segment. So um, every episode, I always advise everybody if they have a question or anything of that sort that they want to have discussed on the show or any ideas or anything of that sort, put a comment in the comment section of every video, or you can go ahead and email us at movie news with Nicholson, N I K L S U N at gmail.com. And on every Friday episode, we'll try to answer as many as we can. So the user questions that have been submitted today or over the past week. So Davin Orvin asks, do you think Ragnarok will be caused by Thanos looking for the infinity gauntlet and gem? And also could Bruce Banner replace Reed Richards as the genius within that group? So to the gauntlet, absolutely. Because we know now we don't know is still within the continuity if they are still planning on keeping it there. But in the very first Thor movie, there's a very quick shot of the infinity gauntlet in Odin's vault, which means that, Ragnarok could be a combination of the Ragnarok storyline from Thor's comic series as well as, and I'm not talking about the, the cyborg Thor. I don't think that that's where they're going at all. They're definitely going end of the world uh, type situation because I think they're trying to finish out Thor's storyline. And after Avengers Infinity Wars, he's going to be done. We're not going to see Thor for a very long time. I, that's my theory because I think they're going to transition into a brand new team. We're not going to see Iron Man anymore. We're not going to see Captain America anymore, or at least this version of Captain America. They're going to continue on with new uh, characters. So the gauntlet, definitely yes. Um, I have a feeling that I don't think that there's another gem on Asgard because we've already got four gems now. They did confirm that uh, Loki's staff is one of the Infinity Gems. So the four that we have now are Loki's staff, we have the Tesseract, we have the Aether from Thor the Dark World, and we have the Orb from Guardians of the Galaxy. All there's needed left is two more. Now, from my understanding, the Orb is the Power Stone. Um, the Tesseract, is, or sorry, the Loki Staff is the Mind Stone. Um, the Tesseract, I think, is the Time Stone, uh, but I may be incorrect on that. That may still be one of the ones that they need to find. But there are still two of them that they need to locate. So... I don't know if they're all, they're going to have the gem and the gauntlet in the same movie. I don't think that they're going to get that. Um, I personally think that Doctor Strange and Guardians 2 are going to be the inclusions of the next two gems. And then he's going to at least either discover that the gauntlet is on Asgard and in Ragnarok he's going to go there. My actual theory is... I have a feeling that through certain circumstances that happen in Thor Ragnarok, they are going to need to clear out Odin's vault. Um, I have a feeling that Surtur is going to be, because uh, anybody who watches AMC Movie Talk, John Schnepp is one of the absolute best guys to go to or to get information from when it comes to comic books. He is a comic nut. This guy knows everything, or at least mostly everything. He has been incorrect a few times, but I'm not going to nitpick with that guy. I mean, he's 99% of the time accurate. And so he talked about how this most likely will be the inclusion of Surtur. Um, and I don't know that much about Surtur. Um, I do know that they have been... There was a theory that went around a while ago that they were going to be bringing in the uh, the fire... Uh, oh, what the hell is the fire planet called? Um, basically, the Hell. It's H-E-L. Hell. Um, and they are going to be introducing that land in the next Thor movie. Now, that makes sense, especially if dealing with Ragnarok, because that's the end of all things. So... Personally, what I think is going to happen is, due to the events of Ragnarok, Odin's vault is going to need to be cleared out in some fashion. And between the events of Ragnarok and Infinity Wars Part 1, Thanos is going to discover the location of the gauntlet. And he is going to make his move. And in Infinity Wars Part 1, he is going to gain control of the gauntlet. And by the end of that movie, or at least at the beginning of Infinity War Part 2, he's going to get all the gems in that glove. And it's going to take all of the Avengers, past and present, and the Guardians, and maybe even the Nova Corps. They may even introduce Nova Corps in Guardians 2 and have this mega massive super team come together to have to defeat Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet. Because that is, the Infinity Gauntlet is the power of everything. Everything. Anything you can see, think, hear, feel, anything. That is what the Infinity Gauntlet gives you when you have all those stones together. 
So I personally feel that no, we're not going to get a gem in Thor Ragnarok, but I think they are going to set the the stage for how Thanos is going to get the gauntlet um, in Thor Ragnarok. And then he's actually going to get it in Infinity War Part 1, and Infinity War Part 2 will be the culmination of all the gems coming together within the gauntlet. By the way, anybody who hasn't seen it, you can check it out online. There is the leaked teaser trailer for uh, Avengers Infinity War that they showed at the Marvel event. Now, there's the only new footage, isn't even new footage, it's just literally Thanos sitting there with the glove. But it shows you all these different clips from all the, the previous films in regards to the four gems that we've already been introduced to. So, I mean, they show clips from Captain America, they show clips from Thor the Dark World, they show clips from Guardians of the Galaxy, and I also think that the Guardians of the Galaxy clips were on purpose, not even just because of the gem, they could have just shown the gem itself, the, the orb, but I think that was them saying to everybody, listen, Guardians are going to be in Infinity Wars, just, just letting you guys know, Infinity War will include the Guardians of the Galaxy. So I'm excited about that. Um, and one other little thing, because in uh, Davin's comment, he also was asking if the... Uh, or or intimating at the other woman in the sequence in the Avengers trailer uh, could in fact be Sky from Agents of Shield, and um, I actually thought that that was a brilliant idea. That not only that, but the connection to Agents of Shield within all the movies and using that as the launching pad. I can uh, for some reason, even though I bring it up on the show, I keep forgetting about it. Um, but Marvel has actually come out and confirmed that the other woman in that party sequence is none other than Claudia Kim, who is a relatively unknown actress, but um, rumors came out a while ago that she was going to be playing a su pretty substantial supporting character. And I think that's the one that uh, Joss Whedon said there's going to be four prominent female leads in this movie. There's going to be Black Widow, there's going to be Maria Hill, there's going to be um, Scarlet Witch, and then there was a fourth unknown. And a lot of people were saying, oh, it's, it might be Wasp, you know, he might be including Wasp. And we now know, at least we're pretty certain that Wasp is going to be Evangeline Lilly in um, Ant-Man. So the rumor is, though, is that she is a substantial supporting role and will be playing a scientist of some kind within Avengers Tower, or Stark Towers is still, I think, known as, um, but they're going to be calling it Avengers Tower. And she's going to have some kind of working relationship with both Tony Stark and Bruce Banner. So I think that that could really work. I, I think that that makes, makes sense. Um, but one of the other things too, the other question that Davin asked was, could Bruce Banner replace Reed Richards as the genius in the group? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that what they've done is they have, Marvel has been brilliant at being able to connect certain characters. So I think that Black Panther, for instance, is going to take the Spider-Man role in the Civil War storyline. I think that Bruce Banner is going to be on Tony's side of Civil War, much like Reed Richards was. He did side with Tony Stark. So I think that Bruce Banner absolutely could be. But again, we don't know what condition the Hulk is going to be in at the end of Avengers Age of Ultron. The rumor has it that he is actually going to be sent off planet, leading into him joining up with either uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy or even potentially... Uh, actually, no, I don't think they would do that because it's set in between the, whole, the uh, Avengers movies, but potentially even being introduced in Captain Marvel. There's a lot of possibilities. We, we don't know anything yet. The Avengers 2 hasn't come out yet. We don't know any concrete evidence. And even if they did come out and officially say this is the ending of the movie, I don't want to know it. I don't want that information to come out. I, <clears throat> I like knowing about certain characters being included in the movie, as long as it isn't a spoiler. Like, um, Anyway. I'm not even going to go into examples, but yes, I do believe Bruce Banner will be the Reed Richards replacement in the Civil War storyline if they bridge the Civil War storyline out over several films, unless they're going to, to just have Civil War be Captain America 3 and then all the other films come out and are separate, then that, that ends the speculation right off the hop because Civil War could be contained to just one film. But I don't think that's the way they're going. I think that's going to be the through line throughout the, uh, the entire phase three lineup um and so then the last question comes to us another one from davin orvin but also with uh swan pride um uh, both of them ask kind of the same question um or at least intimate at something the easter eggs that were hinted at on tuesday's event about inhumans marvel or kevin feige came out and said that easter eggs for the inhumans will be coming a lot sooner than people think and I, on the video, said that that could be potentially in Age of Ultron because of the miracles, the, the twins, that they could somehow be connected to the Inhumans in some capacity, um, or even in Captain America. 
There were a lot of options available there. These guys both came out and said a Easter eggs co could come from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for the Inhumans. And that is a brilliant idea. And again, I don't know why I keep forgetting about how Marvel can include all this stuff in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, but I'm also wondering if, because they've never admitted to the race or to what, what race that alien blue creature was in Season 1. That healed, that they got the serum from to heal Coulson, to heal Sky, and that turned um, uh, Barrett into a crazy man. And Coulson's now starting to show those signs as well. The intriguing thing is, we just got uh, the introduction of a new character at the end of the last episode, where he has all those little designs, and he has them tattooed on himself, and he's getting another one tattooed. So, they're bridging this out, and this could be the start of the seeds for the Inhumans, to lead into the 2018 film. So it's very exciting. I I personally think that's even more likely than Age of Ultron, although they may even include it in that. But Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the perfect launching pad for things like that, as long as the show stays on the air. People need to start watching it. But in, in all fairness, they need to start doing a better job at the show because as much as I do enjoy it, I, I didn't enjoy season one as much. Um, I really did see the procedural effects of it. Season two, they really have a better grasp as to what they're trying to do and the mission that they're trying to go on and the end result that they're trying to get to. Because um, I think within this in this time frame, Avengers Age of Ultron will come out when they have maybe two episodes left, maybe three at the most. So they have an entire season to build up to that. And they say, you know what? That's going to affect a lot of stuff later on. They may even try to do the safe thing and end their show, like end season two in April. And do their season finale like April 20th or 27th or something of that sort. Whenever the Tuesday falls. But, and that would free them up from having to tie in to the Avengers Age of Ultron. They can wait until season three to really start to build up the effects of what those events have caused on this universe. So there's a lot of possibilities that they could go with. But I do believe 100%. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. will be used as a launching pad for the Inhumans in some capacity. Whether or not it be through uh, just Easter eggs, little hints, or anything of that sort, or actually introductions of specific characters. Because Marvel is starting to do that with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mockingbird, uh, who is played by Adrian Pilecki, has hinted at the fact that she may be seen later on in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, not just in the TV universe. Well, I mean, they're both the same, but you know what I mean. Um... So yeah, that, that basically wraps up all of our user questions here. If you guys have any more questions or topics, and by the way, I just wanted to say thank you very much to everybody out there who was putting in comments just saying how much they do like the videos. It re I really do appreciate it. Um, a lot of times, you know, you can start doing this stuff and, and not know whether or not you're actually doing something correct or if people are actually watching it. So I really do appreciate the, the comments that you guys are giving. Thank you so much, and I will definitely try to keep uh, the quality of the show the way that it is. Um, and I also have a new announcement as well. I still have to reach out to Joe uh, to get his thoughts on this, but starting at the end of November or beginning of December, every Monday episode, or at least as many Monday episodes as I can do, will start to have an on-site co-host. Um, so I'll wait a couple of weeks to introduce who that co-host will be, but I've already uh, discussed it with him, and he seems very open to it. So looks like we're going to be starting that most likely for the end of November. And then every Monday after that will be a co-host show, which will be more of a discussion about certain topics maybe that happened the week prior, um, as well as maybe one or two big um, stories that will be coming out on that day. But Monday will be reserved. It'll be a little bit longer of an episode, um, but it will be reserved as a back and forth discussion about a lot of main topics that have come out. I've got a lot of other ideas that are going to be coming down the pipeline within the next several months, so keep your eyes out for some of those. Um, but as it stands right now, these are all of our user submitted questions. And if we do get more information about the Ragnarok connection or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. connection, I will definitely update you guys on here. Well, that'll about do it for us here on Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have been a great audience. Why don't you go ahead and click the subscribe button there in the bottom corner. You can get updates whenever we post a new video. You can also find me on Twitter, at Nicholson, N-I-K-L-S-U-N, for all of your movie updates. And you can also give us a like on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash movie news with Nicholson. Like I said earlier, anytime you guys have a topic or a question you'd like to have talked about on the show, you can go ahead and put a comment in the comment section or email us at movie news with Nicholson, N-I-K-L-S-U-N, at gmail.com. And every Friday episode, we'll try to get to as many as we possibly can. But, but as it stands right now, this is all the information we have for today. And until next time, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.